All right, in class, you should have learned about the three different gas laws. Uh, the first one being Boyle's law, and it talks about the relationship between pressure and volume of a particular gas. Um, the next one should be Charles' law, which talks about the volume and temperature of a particular gas. And um, the, the last one should be gay lussacs law, which talks about the relationship between pressure and temperature of a particular gas. Okay, but what happens when you have pressure, volume, and temperature all changing? Well, we're actually going to combine these gas laws to form one giant gas law called the combined gas law. Okay, if you notice in these three gas laws, the pressure and volume are always on the, on the numerator. So we're going to keep them on the numerator, P1, V1. And notice that temperature is in the, is in the denominator over T1. So all these things are just squished into one. And then P2, V2 over T2. Okay, so this is what we're going to call the combined gas law. So let's actually go over an example and do one together. All right, so I have a problem up here that says a gas at 110 kilopascals and 30 degrees Celsius fills a flexible container with an initial volume of 2 liters. Okay? If the temperature is raised to 80 degrees Celsius and the pressure increased to 440 kilopascals, what is the new volume? Okay, so notice we have three variables. We're talking about pressure, temperature, and um, volume. Okay, so now we're going to employ the combined gas law dealing with all three of those variables. So we're going to look at our first, um, our first number, 110 kilopascals, and that's going to, that is a unit of pressure, so we know that's our P1. Our P1 is 110 kilopascals at 30 degrees Celsius. I don't like things in Celsius, so I'm going to change this to Kelvin. So I'm going to add 273 to that, um, which makes it uh, 303 Kelvin. That's our temperature. And our initial volume was 2 liters, so I'm going to say V1 equals 2 liters. Okay, then I continue reading. If the temperature is raised to 80 degrees Celsius, again we want it in Kelvin, so we're going to add 273, making it 353. So our T2 is 353 Kelvin. And the pressure increased to 440 kilopascals. The pressure, P2, is equal to 440 kilopascals, which I'm very happy that it kept it in kilopascals, so to make sure these units are the same, because pressure can be measured in several different units. We want to make sure our units are the same. And what is the new volume? So our V2 is our variable, what we're trying to find. Okay, so let's basically plug all these variables in into our combined gas law to figure out what the new volume would be. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and say our pressure 1 is 110 kilopascals. Our volume 1 is 2 liters. Our temperature 1 is 303 Kelvin. Our uh, pressure 2 is 440 kilopascals. We don't know our volume, so we're going to just say V2 over uh, 353 Kelvin. Okay, <clears throat> when I'm looking for a variable, I'm going to cross multiply these guys. So I'm going to say 353 times 110 times 2, and that should give me 77660 if you put that in your calculator. So I just cross multiplied these guys. And then cross multiply these guys. Uh, 303 times 440 times V2 gives me um, 133320 V2. Okay, so then I want to get my, I want to isolate my variable, so I'm going to divide by 133320, 133320, and I find that my new volume is 0 0.58, 0 0.58 liters. And that is how you do the combined gas law.